What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Dirt Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today and today we have the March 2021 Tulsa International Airport update for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video. As per usual, me with my great Tulsa experience, we have a lot of awesome stuff here in this Tulsa update. A lot of loaded uh, airport updates recently and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, really bad, glad to get back on the grind after uh, my trip and then uh, just being busy and stuff. But anyways, uh, glad to be back here at Tulsa. Uh, I just had a spotting trip the other day. Uh, it was really good. We'll go into all that fun context throughout this airport update and then also we'll be doing that uh, in the spotting vlog. But anyways, let's get started with Tulsa. So here's our Southwest lineup at the B-Con as per usual. Down there at B1, we have our Southwest 737-800 heart paint scheme. Uh, really fits well. I can put three aircraft in here and we have six routes, so it's pretty perfect. So we'll say this aircraft's coming in from Denver, Colorado, and he's going to be heading out to Las Vegas, Nevada. In the middle, we have the Kenya Blue 737-800 with splits. Uh, I'm really glad to have both those and two productions of each. Uh, really, really nice uh, for the heart and the Kenya Blue. This Kenya Blue is riding in from Dallas Love Field, and he's going to be making his way over to St. Louis. In the front right here, we have the South Carolina 737-700 uh, Illinois 1. I definitely wanted to put this in because it is a very special aircraft to me uh, because I saw it at Tulsa back in 2017, so almost four years ago. It was uh, in June and during summer, I believe June 3rd, I think. But anyways, this guy's currently loading up. Uh, we'll send him out to Phoenix Sky Harbor today. And um, we did not have Chicago Midway at the time. That got cut a couple years before I saw it, uh, 2015 around, 2016 maybe when it got cut. Uh, what was the last destination? Houston Hobby. So, uh, awesome lineup right here. I know Illinois 1 is not currently active. However, uh, it appeared to be that you guys liked seeing it in the Phoenix update. So, I'm still unsure, but I definitely wanted to put in at least one Tulsa update as I thought it's uh, really special after I saw it. So, very, very cool aircraft. Uh, South is looking good over here at the B Concourse. Currently loading up over here at B9 is the Frontier Airlines Airbus A320 Neo Wilbur the Whitetail. This guy's currently loading up on the turnaround back out to Denver, Colorado. In the March schedule, they are doing uh, three weekly flights now. Uh, Wednesday has been added alongside Monday and Friday, which is really nice. I did recently see one. It was Texty Armadillo. Uh, it was a really cool uh, livery. I was uh, actually more impressed with it in real life rather than uh, through the pictures online. Uh, it actually looked pretty dang good in real life. Uh, so one of those things that grows on you, but really glad to see the Frontiers uh, doing some great stuff here out of Tulsa. Um, you know, obviously they, uh, we weren't sure if they were going to make it, but they have, and uh, I'm really excited to see what happens next with Frontier. I think their loads are pretty decent, but I need to ask some of my uh, ramp buddies and see what's up with that. But anyways, looking good. Alrighty, going all old, old colors today. Uh, looking really nice over here. So I'm sure you guys are probably wondering what's going on because there are a few changes. First and foremost, United has been using a lot of B4, which is the gate right down there. Uh, it used to be owned by, uh, or it used to be operated, sorry. Uh, Frontier was there for a handful of years and then Vita Air was there for about two years before they uh, completely fell apart. <laughs> and um, I miss my guys, what can I say? And then uh, United's been using it recently, but it was kind of vacant there for a few years. But anyways, so here's the uh, lineup right here. Uh, definitely some uh, awesome elements right here. So let's start here in the front. So down here at the bottom, we have the United Express Bombier Nasir D-550. He's currently loading up passengers on the turnaround back out to Chicago here. Now Goja, the majority of their aircraft are in the Evo Blue paint scheme. They operate a full fleet of CRJ 550s. Uh, so the majority of the 550s, uh, the new ones that is, uh, they all got delivered in the Evo Blue. And then they have quite a few of them that they used to have that were 700s that they converted over to the 550, which pretty much just means they changed the uh, interior. Uh, the CRJ 700s used to have about 70 seats and all the 550s have around 50 seats, I believe. Uh, obviously with some first, uh, really nice first class seats. So uh, looking really sharp. So what was significant about that is GoJet does not have many of their uh, tr uh, converted 550s in the old livery, I should say. So the majority of them all have the Evo Blue, like I said, but there are a couple that uh, have the uh, old livery like this. And I did see one the other day. Uh, we saw it back on October 16th, it was 552, but I did get a lot better pictures of it this time. So it was nice to see that. So I thought that was cool. Another really neat situation right there, we have the United Express Ember Ear J-145 being operated on behalf of Commute Air. Uh, he's doing the turnaround out to Houston Air Continental. Uh, the majority, um, if you guys are unaware, I'm not gonna go into the full story, but there used to be three major operators of the 145 for United, that would be Express Jet, Trans State Airlines, and of course, Commute Air. Um, so Commuter at this point has took them all over. Uh, they're the only uh, 145 subsidiary branch to my knowledge of the United 145. And uh, they have, or there is not many of the United 145s left with the uh, non-winglets. The majority of them are the XR variant with the winglets. 
Uh, I did get to see one of the ones without the winglets today, which was, or sorry, uh, my last spotting trip, I should say, which was really cool because obviously, like I said, there are not too many of those left. So that was really nice to see, and I'm going to be excited to share that. I've seen a lot of them in the past, but not many recently with uh, the denoiser and everything. So that was really nice. Uh, nothing too special up there on the top. We have a United uh, Express Mitsubishi CRJ200 or Bombardier operated on behalf of SkyWest Airlines. He's going to be taking it up to uh, Denver today. I probably should have put it on 175 because it's more 175s, but quite a few uh, flying dumpsters do still fly that route. So uh, looking sharp over here with the full old lineup. So let's take it over to the Acon here in a second and get things rolling over there. Right here we have an American Eagle Bombardier Nace here, day 700. This is going to be filling in for a Mesa CRJ 900. He's currently arriving in from Phoenix Sky Harbor and he's going to be heading back out there very shortly. Loads have been uh, absolutely phenomenal on this flight. Uh, that's why it's uh, back up to, or uh, got promoted up to year round like we talked about in the last few updates. Uh, routes thriving, which is really exciting. Um, I got confidence a 900 is not impossible. Even if it's a PSA, we'll more than uh, we'll more than uh, gladly take it. Which is the more uh, they have, I think. Um, not sure if they have the upright winglet mold. I would assume the wings are interchangeable between the seven and 900, uh, because 700 obviously has the upright winglets and 200 even. Uh, but I think they're about the same. So anyway, uh, really excited for that. Hanging out over there, A3 is our Allegiant Air Airbus A319. He's currently getting loaded up and we're gonna send this guy out to Los Angeles today. I don't think we've done Los Angeles in a while. So why don't we do Los Angeles? Uh, Allegiant doing really good. Um, I saw three of their uh, A319s the other day. Uh, two old livery and one new livery. They still have a ton of uh, old livery. I would say that's probably about the ratio, every two out of three. So about 66% of them still probably have about the old livery, give or take. It's probably closer to 50%, but still really, really nice to see them. Uh, I really like both liveries, so it's a win-win for me for sure. But uh, yeah, they're doing good. I would expect maybe an announcement soon and maybe some new flights. So we'll keep an eye on that. Currently pushing back from A5 is this American Eagle Ember Air J-175 being operated on behalf of Envoy Air. He's currently pushing back with service out to Chicago O'Hare. Uh, in the March schedule, this did get a promotion from one daily, or I think it's like five weekly back in February. It was like five, or it was a, about a daily uh, Ember Air J-145 to a daily Ember Air J-145 and a night overnight, I should say, Ember ERJ-175. So nice to see that progression there. And we do have some more uh, things to talk about for Americans, so let's talk about those. All right, so here we go with uh, A7 and A9. So right over there at A7, we have an American Airlines 737-800 in the One World paint scheme. Uh, it's been a while since I've got it in here at Tulsa, so I'm glad to get it in here today. This aircraft is currently arriving in from Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, and he's gonna be heading back out there uh, very shortly. And then at A9, we have an American Airlines 737-800. This one in the uh, normal livery, this that NG models. Uh, model. Uh, this guy's currently loading up and he's going to be making the turnaround back up to Charlotte Doubles International Airport as AA2662. I'm sorry, that one's just off the top of my head. Unfortunately, in the uh, May schedule, American's uh, May schedule came out way early. Uh, Dallas is up seven daily flights with some RJs. Unfortunately, though, Charlotte, we will be losing our um, 737 mainline uh, at least for a little bit here. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to sit here and hide it up. Uh, the loads have been pitiful. Uh, it's more of a business route typically, but uh, it does have some leisure to it, but not enough to uh, sustain. Our midday flight on the CRJ900 uh, always does really well, uh, especially those last 15 passengers that come in on reserve and fill up the or get it up to 100% uh, typically. And now, uh, during now, they've been doing that as well. Uh, but normally during normal times, they would all do that all the time. And then the 737 would go up full for a variety of reasons, usually between business travelers, leisure travelers, and then of course, all the employees shuffling between Tulsa and Charlotte. Now, believe it or not, the only reason that this is a mainline service uh, for uh, Tulsa is because of the maintenance base. Uh, American Airlines uh, doesn't have a lot of mutual points between Dallas and Charlotte, long story short. Uh, the tr uh, rotate 737s, even though they're both bases for the 737, it makes a lot more sense to rotate them through. So so for example, one flight will come in from Charlotte, sit for a day maybe, or on in the morning, turn out to uh, Dallas just to get a little rotation going. And American especially loves to do that, but you'll see many instances of this from Delta, United, and many other airlines uh, rotating their aircraft throughout airports. Sorry if I can't talk today. Uh, we worked really hard today, so I'm kind of uh, a little tired. But anyways, um, what's really cool in compensation though is on the night flight, they'll be sending a uh, Republic 175. Uh, first and foremost, we have not had American Republic here. Um, I want to say, um, I, know, I don't recall it ever being here. It may have, but I don't recall it. Uh, so it's really cool that we're finally getting uh, Republic here. So that's a little nice compensation. 
Um, it would have been really rough, would have been a Piedmont 145, but we are getting the Republic 175. Now I believe all the configurations are the same, so uh, this will be the first time ever Tulsa, and I can confirm this, this will be the first time ever Tulsa will be seeing regular, regularly scheduled 175s with the normal winglets for American, uh, which is very, very cool. Um, we may have got some in the past on diversions and stuff, but we never regularly got them uh, serving in here. So going to be exciting to have Republic back at Tulsa. They came in with uh, United uh, through Chicago a little bit uh, in the fall. So really excited to get Republic back, uh, especially on American for something different, but I will miss our 737. But I do suspect this route will come back very soon on the 737 uh, when times, or oh, I should say, uh, when the loads get back to uh, adequate for 737. I can see it coming back as early as July, maybe sometime next year, but nevertheless, uh, we'll get a little Republic and pandemic causing some mass chaos. How about that? Nothing new, that is. <laughs> and currently loading up at A4 is the Delta Airlines Boeing 717. This guy's currently loading up on the turnaround back out to Lance Hartsville Jackson. We are back to three daily uh, 717s as the winter period is over. Therefore, uh, no more uh, CRJ 9s consistently. However, that's not going to last for very long. Uh, we'll have three daily 717s through March, and then in mid-April, they'll do three CRJ 900s and a daily 717. Uh, just for frequency and all that fun stuff, uh, they're going to probably use 717 elsewhere, which is all good. Uh, but I'm really glad that it is back consistently. I did see two of them the other day, so that's awesome. And really, really glad to keep catching Delta 717 because who knows what the future is. Would absolutely love to fly one of these. Uh, hopefully when the frequency gets back to, um, I would really like to catch one in the fall ones next year maybe. Um, because obviously it's three daily, so definitely works out well. So we'll see what happens, but I'm um, really, really excited. Alrighty, so here is the cargo section. I did decide to put the FedEx 757 on the end of it because uh, we really need the space because of how many cargo flights we're getting right now. But let's get started. So right there at the end, we had the FedEx Express Boeing 757-200. This guy's currently arriving in from Fort Worth, uh, Alliance Airport, and he's gonna be taking it up to Chicago O'Hare. Uh, it's been running in consistently, but, or kind of consistently, I should say, but uh, it's nice to see. In the middle, yes, that is a FedEx Express Boeing 767-300 freighter. Really, really neat. We are starting to get these uh, semi, or yeah, I would say semi-regularly pretty much. Uh, it's coming in about three to four times a week. I did see one uh, take off, which was really cool. It was 104. Uh, but it's really, really interesting to see that we're getting FedEx 767s. This unfortunately probably means that the uh, DC-10, uh, MD-10 freighter, um, the future is um, unfortunately going to be coming to a close at some point here, which is really, really sad. But um, at, I mean, it's, the 767 is a fair replacement, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I, the DC-10 is still coming in some, but nevertheless, I'm really enjoying uh, my time with the DC-10 and the 767 as well. Really, really cool aircraft. And then UPS 767-300 has been coming in very consistently, um, sometimes twice a day, which is impressive, but every day besides Saturday, it's here. And he's currently riding in from Louisville. He's going to be taking it back up there, but very impressive stuff. Um, I'm eager to see how FedEx is going to go about the schedule with the 767. Um, obviously, we saw in uh, spotting vlog number, um, pardon me, uh, 12, uh, that one come in, but that was not a Memphis flight, and then a variety. Of, so yeah, absolutely mind-boggling, mo most certainly, but the cargo thriving, that's for sure. Another cargo aircraft that is still coming in is the UPS Boeing 757-200 freighter, which is awesome. This guy's currently arriving in from Little Rock. Uh, they always come in from... Uh, uh, they always come in from Little Rock, it would appear to be, usually every time, but they always typically go out to uh, the same four or five destinations, but it's nice to see the variety. Uh, let's send this one over to Denver. Uh, I think I did Ontario last time, so I think Denver is good for this time, uh, but they've been sending a variety. So nice to see, I hope we uh, I hope it stays, but uh, really been fun to see the UPS 757. I'm sure you guys are probably wondering where the Salt Lake City flight is. Uh, it's right here. I just thought I'd put it over here for difference. So currently taxiing, waiting uh, for the FedEx to take off. We have a Delta Connection uh, Bombardier and Sierra Day-900 operating on behalf of SkyWest Airlines uh, with service out to uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, there's been, it's been mainly two daily CRJ 900s, but we have got a few 700 substitutions uh, because it's a pretty simple substitution, but still really nice. What do you even say about the Gemini Jet set? Um, now I'm gonna have to say first release and second release, which I never thought it was gonna happen. Here we are, everybody. Man, gonna have to get a glass case for those two. Wow, that is absolutely crazy. And then currently holding short of only 3.6, right? We have a FedEx feeder ATR 72. Uh, we cannot forget that technically these are operated on, on the behalf of subsidiaries. I'm pretty sure for sure the 42s are operated by Empire Air, 
but I believe um, Airlines Air, I'm not, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure 72 is ours as well. Love to get a 42 model, um, but they are extremely hard to find. But here's that 72 variant. He's currently holding short and he's gonna be taking flight with service out to, uh, we're gonna send him, let's send him over to, uh, let's do Wichita this time, uh, just for different, uh, looking good. I also saw a really cool cargo aircraft. It was a sub air um, cargo uh, beach, aircraft i need to double check it was kind of like a 1900 but it was, had a pretty long fuselage uh they do come to tulsa a lot but it was not scheduled or anything and I had my radio off so i just saw it and it was really really cool so we'll talk about that in the uh, spotting vlog but that was really cool currently taking off back out to service this is american airlines or 8319 in the uh america west heritage paint scheme he's currently taking flight and he's going to be taking it back over to dallas fort worth finally this guy after sitting on the ground for three months is heading back to service he went back about two weeks ago and he's been uh mainly at dallas i believe uh but really really glad that america west is finally back Piedmont is still grounded, but I'm sure she's going to be coming up next, uh, heading back to service, and then we'll have all the heritage deliveries flying, which is awesome. Um, obviously, uh, we don't want aircraft ground. I mean, it's really cool to see, uh, like, how should I word this? It's really cool to experience if you get to see it, but besides that, uh, it's obviously not good to have, uh, for the airlines just to have their planes sitting and, you know, uh, but... Uh, really glad we had the opportunity to see it and now she's heading back to service where she belongs So really really great stuff right there last but certainly not least we do have some hangar 5 action uh, We have an American 737 Max 8. Uh, we're just gonna say that he's hanging out ready to go back to service at some point in the hangar We have an American Airlines Boeing 777-200 ER in the one world livery really really weird um, Both these came in at the same time uh, both of them have close tail numbers to each other So maybe that's why but both of them uh, 791 came in first at 5 o'clock one day and then uh, 796 came in um, a few days later, which was absolutely crazy to have them both on the ground at once. Uh, I think they were just for quick checks. Uh, they both went back to service about three days after they came in. Uh, I think uh, one came in from Miami and went out to Dallas and vice versa for the other. So maybe they were just flipping spots, but really, really cool to see that. I thought that was very neat. And then we have uh, two aircraft there on the right. We have a 737-800. Uh, he just came in. Uh, where did I see the last one come in uh, from? I think I saw one coming from Boston. So we're gonna say he came in, uh, he's coming in for a C check from Boston. And we have an Airbus A320. Uh, he was grounded for months, but he's gonna be heading back to service soon. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Tulsa update. Uh, lots of awesome dynamics. Spotting vlog number 13 will be awesome. And I'm really, really excited to get that out for you guys. And hopefully I didn't sit on too wore out for this video, but just trying to grind out that content. I think I've edited like two videos this morning as well. Just getting on that grind, man. I also do an ECT prep and all that good stuff. So. Hard to juggle everything, but we're making it happen. Uh, we're not stopping anywhere. Uh, real life content got um, quite a few videos already edited up for that. So I'm super pumped about that. And uh, yeah, we're thriving. So uh, nevertheless, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Tulsa. Um, I thought the subsidiary action was awesome, especially the United Express situations. And that may be a topic uh, that may come uh, in a future video. We may talk about those subsidiaries a little bit and kind of explain how the subsidiaries work more in depth. So let me know if you guys would like to see that. Maybe even the mainline branches as well. Um, from the knowledge that I have, I think I could do a pretty good job of that. But, uh, you know, sorry about the Sirius Club, by the way. Just kind of came in and finished off the update. But another, uh, I'll give the credit for a sunny update, which is that's like the 21st consecutive, barely, but we did it. So absolutely crazy, but we're thriving right now, guys. But nevertheless, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. One thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, guys. Stay safe. Trust the process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Redditor of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon as Redditor of Aviation is signing off.